Good morning. St. Thomas Aquinas is happy to present Math Skills. Today's lesson, Building and Solving Linear Equations. Three Steps to the Edge. On word problems, following these three steps will help you build a linear equation and solve the problem using that linear equation if necessary. Step one, rewrite the question using a variable or an algebraic expression containing one or more variables. Step two, translate all verbal information into mathematical equations or formulas. Step three, isolate the variable or the expression to solve the problem. Let's focus on step one, rewriting the question. Questions can be represented by a variable or an expression. For example, what is Joe's height? Solve for J. How much will Sarah spend if she spends 20% of her allowance? This is a question that can be represented by an expression. 0.2 times S, 20% of her Sarah's allowance. S representing Sarah's allowance. What is the average of Joe's test grade and Sarah's test grade together? This is a question that can be represented by an expression with more than one variable. J plus S divided by 2. J representing Joe's test grade, S representing Sarah's test grade. Here's a sample problem that we'll be using to go through these steps. A baker earns $9 per hour for making cookies and an additional $30 tip if all the cookies are bagged. If the baker made $102 yesterday after baking for several hours and bagging all the cookies, how many hours did he work? Step one, notice we've highlighted in red how many hours did he work? We'll represent that with a variable x. You could really choose any variable you want. In this case, we use x, which is number of hours worked. Step two is translating verbal information. Most verbal information can be represented by an equation using typical mathematical translations. For example, altogether, more than, and, some, increased by, really means addition. Difference between, less than, decreased by, really means subtraction. Is, equal to, represents, measures, really means equal. Product, per, of, times, means multiplication. Quotient, out of, for every, really means division and implies the usage of rates, ratios, and proportions. Average, or arithmetic mean, means add up all the items on the list and divide by the total number of items. Some verbal information can be represented by an inequality using typical mathematical translations. For example, seven or more, or seven or less. This means you're going to include seven and everything less or more than seven. The keyword there is including seven. Greater than seven, less than seven, more than seven, etc. means include everything that's less than or more than seven, but not including seven. It's important to note that certain problems will require knowledge of common formulas and the ability to make mathematical inferences based on real-life scenarios. For example, if they discuss a rectangle, you might have to know that the area of a rectangle is length times width. Mathematical inferences include the ability to look at a math problem and understand that they're implying some type of operation, that they're implying multiplication, addition, subtraction, so on and so forth. Let's look at our sample problem again and do step two. Notice we've highlighted the pertinent information. Nine dollars per hour is multiplication, nine times x. An additional thirty dollar tip, plus thirty. And notice that tip is only if the cookies are bagged, but they state that he did bag all the cookies. When it says the baker made a hundred and two dollars, we have to make a mathematical inference there. That the equation is going to equal or represent a hundred and two dollars even though it's not directly stated with the word is or equal to. Step three, isolate the variable. After first simplifying the equation, isolate the variable by following the specific algebraic rules that you've learned in class. These include 
reversing the typical order of operations. One way to think about that is order of operations is usually parentheses first, multiplication before addition, so on and so forth. We want to reverse that. So you'll be going addition first, then multiplication, so on and so forth. A different way to look at it is start as far away from the variable as possible and work your way towards the variable. Either way, you're reversing the typical order of operations. While doing so, you're going to use inverse operations, which means use subtraction to get rid of addition, use division to get rid of multiplication, so on and so forth. Always remember to balance the equation. Whatever you do to the left side must be done to the right. And implement rules of inequalities if necessary. Remember, inequalities can be treated the same as equalities as long as you remember that if you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to flip the sign, change the direction of the sign. Isolating the expression. Remember we said some questions will ask you to solve for an expression which includes one or more variables. You can follow one of two options when doing this. Option one is to isolate the expression as a whole. Option two is to solve for parts of the expression and plug in. Now let's do an example of isolating the expression. The example is solve for y plus 3 if the given information is 2y plus 6 equals 12. We'll do both options. Option 1 is to isolate the expression as a whole. If 2y plus 6 equals 12, I can divide everything by 2, which will give me y plus 3 equals 6. Notice I've isolated the expression y plus 3 as a whole. Option 2 is to solve for parts of the expression and plug in. So starting with 2y plus 6 equals 12, I'll try to solve for y. So I minus 6 on each side to give me 2y equals 6. Divide by 2 on each side to give me y equals 3. And now that I've solved for y, I'll plug in. Instead of y plus 3, 3 plus 3 equals 6. Both options lead to the same answer. Let's go back to our sample problem and do step 3. We already had 9x plus 30 equals 102. I subtract 30 on each side to get 9x equals 72. I then divide each side by 9 to get x equals 8. In other words, he must have worked 8 hours if he made $102. Let's do some practice problems. The practice problems will increase in level of difficulty. After each quarter, a student receives $10 for every A on his report card and an additional $30 just for finishing the quarter. Assuming the student finished the quarter, what expression could be used to determine how much the student earned after the first quarter? Step one, y is going to represent the amount of money he earned. x is going to represent the number of a's on his report card. Technically here, we're solving for y. We want an expression to determine how much money he earned. Step two, my translations y is going to equal 10x plus 30 because $10 for every a implies mathematical inference 10 times x, $10 per a. The additional 30 would be plus 30. Now it's stated that he did finish the quarter so we're going to include that plus 30. Notice here that step 3 is not necessary because all they wanted was the expression. So step 2 actually answers the question. Let's move on to the next practice problem. The cafeteria sells wings individually and in boxes of six. On a certain day, the cafeteria sold a total of 281 wings, of which 29 were sold individually. How many boxes of wings were sold that day? Step one, B is going to represent boxes of wings, and that's what we're actually solving for. Not the number of wings, but the number of boxes. I is going to represent individual wings. Step two, let's build our equation. Mathematical inference here. I start with 6 times b, and why? Because I'm building an equation that represents the total amount of wings, or the total number of wings. If a box has 6 wings each, then 6 times b will represent the actual number of wings. One box will be 6, two boxes will be 12, so on and so forth. So 6 times b. Plus the individual wings that were sold should represent the total amount of wings. So 6b plus i equals 281. 
I substitute I for 29. They told me 29 were individual. And now I can go to step 3, solving for B. I subtract 29 on each side to get 6B equals 252. I then divide each side by 6 to get B equals 42. So 42 boxes of wings were sold. Our last practice problem is very difficult. To help someone with homework, Sarah charges an automatic fee of $15 plus $8 per hour. Taylor charges an automatic fee of $12 plus $9 per hour. If X represents the number of hours spent helping with homework, what are all the values of X for which Taylor's total charge is greater than Sarah's total charge? Now on this problem, you will notice that step one is somewhat difficult. For step one, X is going to represent the number of hours worked. But we're going to have two extra variables. S is going to represent Sarah's total charge. T is going to represent Taylor's total charge. In this case, we are solving for X that's going to make Taylor's total charge greater than Sarah's. So step two, we're going to use that language to our advantage. T has to be greater than S. Taylor's total charge greater than Sarah's total charge. Now what we need is an equation that represents each one. Well, Taylor's total charge can be represented by 12 plus 9x. Notice the information, $9 per hour with an additional or automatic fee of 12. Sarah's can be represented by 15 plus 8x, $8 per hour with that automatic fee of 15. When I substitute, I have 12 plus 9x is greater than 15 plus 8x. Taylor's charge greater than Sarah's. Step three, I simply isolate x. I subtract 8x on each side, giving me x on the left. I subtract 12 on each side, giving me 3 on the right. So x is greater than 3. In other words, any amount of hours greater than 3, Taylor's charge will be greater than Sarah's. A complicated problem, which is broken down to be simple if we follow these three steps. Thank you, and we'll see you next week.